Hello, this is Zafir from Moksa, and it is MRC Quick Link tutorial video. My job is field application engineer, so if I'm working from home or if I'm on a business travel, there's not much I can do because I need to test equipment. But luckily, I have this new product which enables remote access to industrial automation gear. And in this video, I'm going to explain how it works, how to set it up and show you some results. So this is me, I'm at home and I have a test bed in my office. I would like to use it remotely. For this task, I need three components. The central component is MRC server and there is a free to use instance for customers hosted by Moxa. It is called QuickLink. Second component is MRC gateway. It is a communication device that can be installed in industrial system to provide a remote access. And the last component is MRC Client, which is a small piece of software I install on my laptop. With this, I can build a connection from my laptop to the testbed. Here's what I'm going to do in this video. I will log in to MRC Quick Link, create a gateway key, import it into MRC Gateway. Then I will install the gateway in the office. I will go back to Quick Link to create a client key and import it into my laptop. And finally, I'll test my connection. Out of these three components, the only physical device that you need to purchase is MRC Gateway. So before we start, let me quickly show it to you. I have a cellular version of MRC Gateway, so there are two antennas in the box. And the gateway itself. It's an industrial grade communication device with wide operating temperature range from minus 40 to plus 70 degrees Celsius. Here are antenna connectors and here are two wired Ethernet ports. Gateway comes with a nice DIN rail mounting kit and it supports DC power input, which is common in automation cabinets. So how can you make it work? First of all, you need to get MRC Quick Link account. To do that, go to moxa.com, support, software license management. If you don't have Moxa account yet, create one by clicking this button and fill in the form. Then, just use your email and password to log in. Once in, select Activate your license and choose MRC Quick Link. Here you need to fill in the serial number of MRC Gateway. It can be found on a sticker that is located on the right side of the enclosure and you need to choose a desired username for accessing the Quick Link Cloud. There is a small survey for our product team to keep improving user experience, so please fill it in as well. Click Submit and review the details of your Quick Link license. This completes the registration process. Now you can check your email. There should be a message with temporary password and a link to MRC server. Copy the password and click the link to log in. The username is the one you define during license registration. Since this is our first login attempt, system will ask you to define a new password. So this is MRC server user interface. It is a place where you manage your MRC gateways and clients. And here you also can define the granular access policy for communications between them. We can use wizard for initial setup. And let's start from creating a new gateway. As you can see, there are six steps in this process. Let's quickly go through them. I'll give gateway a name, Moxa Lab, assign a location, for my scenario, I want a complete transparent access to remote network from my laptop without any restrictions. That's why I can disable auto IP mapping, also gateway to gateway, 
and enable all broadcast and multicast to pass through. Since I'm going to use cellular for internet access, uh, the scenario here is cellular WAN mode. I'm gonna use local ISP and I know that its APN value should be internet. And I want to enable cellular watchdog just in case of any connectivity issues. This will basically reboot gateway if cellular fails. On this next step, I'm assigning the local IP address. I know that this 254 address is already used by other devices in my network, so I will change it to 50, which is unused. Step 5 lets you specify a list of allowed communications. This is a good practice to limit access to only what is really necessary, but since this is just a lab equipment, which is not really connected to company's network, I will let myself be careless and allow communications without restrictions. Okay, the wizard is also giving me a warning about that. And the final step is tunnel control. Here I can define whether the gateway will have permanent connection to the cloud or controlled by the presence of USB key or digital input. Let's select USB here. And we are done with gateway setup. Now I can go to gateway management menu and here I can see Moxa lab gateway that I've just configured. Its current status is deactivated as you can see. So what I need to do is to click on activation key here and download the key. I'm putting this key file on my USB thumb drive. And now I'm ready to deploy the gateway in the lab. So I'll head to the office and do it. Here is what I brought to the office. MRC gateway, cellular antennas, SIM card, thumb drive, screwdriver, and power cables. I'll start from installing a SIM card. I need to open this metal cover with a Phillips screwdriver. SIM card has to be full sized, so I'm using an adapter here. Okay, so I have finished with the SIM and I can now install two antennas for LTE and insert the thumb drive with the key file on it. This is a test bed that I usually use for product testing. It has several MOXA switches, a router, I.O. and serial device server as well as computer with lots of engineering tools. I'm gonna mount the MRC gateway on Dean Rail here and last step would be to connect it to power. On top of the gateway there is a terminal block for DC power. Now when the gateway is powered I'm gonna connect the LAN port to one of the testbed switches. And we can see how gateway boots up. In the beginning it has only a power LED on. Then gateway detects a USB drive and reads the key file with configuration. Once configuration is applied you will see SIM LED and GLOBE LED on which means successful internet connection. And shortly the cloud LED turns on to indicate connectivity to MRC server. This group of three LEDs on the right is showing cellular signal strength. After a while, you will see last two LEDs turning on, indicating that VPN tunnel is ready. The whole booting process takes about two minutes. Okay, looks like I'm done here and I can leave the office now. Okay, I'm back home, so I'm gonna log into the MRC server again. Go to Gateway Management tab and see that the gateway is activated and online. It is also now has a virtual IP address that I can use for management. If I click on it, I'll be redirected to web UI of the gateway. Here I can quickly check the status of uh, WAN interface for example, and the status of LAN interface. Okay, now it's time to define a client that can connect to this gateway. I'm going back to wizard, but this time I select create client. 
there is only one step of the wizard here. I need to define login, email, password, and the time frame when this client account is active. I will allow myself to use it, let's say, until end of the year. Okay, hit save and finish and go to client management menu. I see the client account in the list now and similarly I need to go to the settings tab and download the key. Now that I have the key file for client, it's time to install the client software. Software can be downloaded from MRC product page on moxa.com. Go to products, secure remote access, moxa remote connect suite. In the resources section, there is a link to downloading MRC client. Also down below, you can find user manuals and tech notes about MRC. Client software installation is pretty straightforward. During the process, it will install a tab interface. So make sure that you have administrator privileges and be ready to suspend antivirus. Now I can run the client and import my key file. Remember to hit apply button and then optionally test connection and finally sign in. Once signed in, go to device pool tab and push the tunnel on off button to activate connection to MRC gateway. This is it. Now I have a connection from my laptop back to the test bed in the office. Let me open a command line first to check connectivity and show you the routing table. When I enabled that tunnel, MRC client automatically added new route to remote network behind MRC gateway through virtual interface. And I can ping a remote computer. It looks fine. Let's see if I can ping a router. Also fine. And now I can try remote desktop session to the computer in order to really be able to use all of the tools I have installed on my test bed. So here I am accessing all the engineering tools using remote desktop. I can also directly access test bed devices as if I'm connected with a cable to testbed network. This is a web UI of Moxa EDR router. And this is Moxa's NMS software called MXView. Here I can see the topology and status of all devices in my network. Let's quickly review what we have achieved and reveal some technical details. So I installed a gateway in my lab and connected it to 127 subnet. I assigned 127.50 IP address to MRC gateway. All that configuration was actually done on QuickLink server and was imported to the gateway using USB thumb drive. That's how I got the first half of my connection. Gateway built a VPN tunnel back to QuickLink server. Then I imported a key into MRC client on my laptop and built the second half of my connection. And finally, I breached those two connections when I enabled the tunnel in MRC client interface. As a result, my laptop received a new route to 127 subnet. So when I sent a packet to testbed equipment, it went to the tunnel through virtual interface, the QuickLink cloud, and cloud redirected it to gateway tunnel. Then that packet was propagated to testbed network with a slight change. Actually, the source IP address was changed by gateway to .50. So for testbed devices, it looks like a normal communication within their subnet. So that means Gateway also performs NAT function. I tested connectivity to two testbed devices, a computer with IP.100 and EDR router with IP.254. I checked the remote desktop connection 
and also MXView software, which is running on that computer. And also I checked web UI of a router. So with this, I can do most of my job from home. There's no doubt that this kind of remote access is convenient. However, please consider the cybersecurity aspect of it. Make sure that you follow your company's security policies, that you handle those keys with care, and that you're using a clean laptop without viruses or malware. It's always a good idea to check with your cybersecurity department and follow their advice. That's it for the video. I hope you liked it and let us know if you have any further questions. Thanks for watching.